What's the P word for that? You're going to perform. Very good. You're going to perform. So you have to be in a mindset that says, I'm going to bring value. I'm going to do something here that's worthwhile. That might be pinch running. That might be diving and stopping the ball. You might not even get the out. You might be able to dive and stop the ball and keep them from getting another base. It might be pinch hitting. It might be pitching. It might be catching. It might be you have a couple base hits. But you've got to be prepared in your mind to provide some value, whatever that value is. All right? Because there's going to be a spot where you're going to, it's going to be important for your team, for you, and you've got to be ready. You have a mindset for it. And we're going to give you one, we're going to focus on one thing tonight. We're going to focus on one thing, and that's going to be your, your routines. Okay, specifically hitting, because how many of you love to hit? Me. Like, everybody loves to hit, right? So we're going to apply that. All right? So, um, rule number one. Rule number one, and the words that you need to fill in are going to be underlined on the screen. Okay? Okay, so the first blank that you fill in is control. After you get that filled in, we'll talk about it a little. So you have no control over what goes on around you. And you have total control over how you respond. I actually, uh, we started working, we, when I first started working with uh, baseball players at Nook, we were upstairs in like the fancy dancing meeting rooms. It was pretty cool, uh, but very rarely did anybody walk by. The acoustics were a lot better, like you could hear the voice kind of echoes in here. And when we moved down here, I was a little irritated at first because the voice would, my voice would echo. It wasn't as nice to like listen to it. Like even if like if you guys talked at your table, it kind of like echoed and it kind of was disruptive. But then I kind of changed my mindset and I thought, you know, we have some things we can work on. Okay, this is a big thing for us. How we respond. At some point tonight, there's going to be people walk by. Personally, I'm going to be distracted. Okay, you might glance out the corner of your eye like right now and every once in a while I like wave to people. And so I didn't we didn't have any control that we were in this room, but we did control how we respond. So are we gonna it's it's something we can work on, we'll be able to work on our focus. We're gonna do we're gonna do a focus concentration grid tonight that allows you to kind of work on your focus. It allows you to work on being able to stick with something. What's another word for respond? Okay, if I, if I, like, you could answer something, that would be a response. There's another R word that I like to talk about here. Some of you think about it like this, but let's say, um, let's say you're playing shortstop and the balls hit um, to your left, like, towards second base. And you, like, blank to go get it. You don't think about it. You think about it, oh, should I go get that ball? What do you do? React. You react. Very good, would you? Robert. Oh, Robert, react. I'll, now I always remember Robert because you, you said react as the same first level. Same first level. Um, so I want you to understand this. Like, look, look at the older people in the room. That's included me. Okay. They, they, they had to drive you here tonight, right? Somebody had to drive you here. Last time I checked, none of you had the license. Probably. Hope not. I know it's a 10 to 9 U team combined, but we can't put those ages together and get you a license. All right, so look, like they, if, if somebody were to pull out in front of your parents when they were driving, what would they do? They would hit the brakes, maybe swerve, they're reacting. They're not thinking, oh, should I stop? Should I go left? Should I go right? They're going to slam on the brakes, they're going to react. Those are natural. The pitcher throws the ball to you, you're going to react. You're going to swing or you're going to take it. The ball's hit, you're going to react. We're not talking about those. We're talking about things like, hey, Maybe you don't like what the teacher says. Maybe you don't like what uh, the push-ups you got to do. We're talking about that's a response. You respond, and you control your response. It might not be as easy at your age, but you control. And the second thing that you control is what is on rule number two. Before I click it, what do you if you read that those blanks? If you read the whole thing and you look at the blanks that are there. See if you can fill in the first blank in your mind 
before we actually do it. We have to run around every once in a while. See? <laughs> okay. We'll get you up to this point. What do you think that first blank is? That same word is actually in the words that are given to you. Get them into a routine because then they do it and they don't even start thinking about things. 
This is the one thing that I hammer on. Um, it's been successful in my life and in my kids' lives. Like we're we, we're not at the point where if we don't have everything by routine that we're out of whack, but we get them in a routine so that we know and we are prepared. All right, how many of you have ever done a focus concentration grip with me? Okay, you want to explain what you do? You have to like them. Perfect. Okay, that's that's everything you need to know right now. So here's the deal. This I made it a little smaller so you can see the numbers. If I put it one to one hundred, it would be a little bit more difficult to see. But you're going to get a grid that has the numbers one to one hundred all spaced out through the grid. Okay. And yes, you cross them out. But in what order do you cross them out? Yeah, so you find number one first, and after you find one, what do you find next? Two. Two, then you find three. Why should one through nine be a little easier? Why should one through nine? Like if I find one, cross it off, then I find, uh, put two on here, two, three. Why should those be a little easier? Where just they're single digits. Okay? If you're the only one that does do you remember how long we do it for? Because there's a method to this man's. At 10, you can play six innings? So, six and seven. Six and seven? Okay, keep the face down. Okay, here's the deal. Because of probably how long some of these activities I have to explain them to you, we'll take, we're going to do six minutes. The reason I do six minutes is because you typically play at least six innings. So we do one minute for, for per inning. Okay? When you flip it over, hold on, don't flip it over yet. You're gonna, you're gonna find, and parents, I'll leave them here for you if you wanna try and compete with your children, not against them, compete with. All right, real competition is with yourself. So here's what's gonna happen. When you flip it over, you're gonna find number one, you're gonna cross it off, you're gonna find number two, you're gonna cross it off. Look, it's the honor system, but I'm gonna tell you this, I had somebody do this one time, they flipped it over, they crossed everything off, they were done in like 50 seconds. I was, I was like, it's pretty easy to tell that you didn't go in order. Okay, you just cross them off. So again, it's an honor system. You're going to cross them off one at a time. We're going to go six minutes. Why are we doing six minutes? Six, 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 six innings in a, in a game you can typically play. Okay, ready? Turn it over and go. All the numbers are there. And just to give it a little energy, we'll, we'll play some music for you while you're
You're halfway through the game. You have three minutes left. Copy your paper, write either the last number you found or the one you were searching for. Whichever is easier for you to remember. Okay, now ideally, now I'll tell you this is for you players and this is also for you parents. Um, when we work with the older kids over a longer period of time, we do this every time and their job is to compete with themselves and get a higher number each time. And we'll get to the point, when I first started this, um, we did not have people finish in seven minutes, and we'll get to the point now where we have some kids that are able to lock in and they're able to get it done in like about four minutes, um, and really focus in, obviously they're 18, 16, 17, 18 years old, a little bit older than, than these kiddos. All right, you might want to get in a spot where you need to be able to sneak over here so you can see. Um, we're gonna focus on hitting routines tonight. This is a video that was posted a couple years ago. Uh, this is from a Japanese high school baseball player. It is really interesting. I want you to watch what they do between pitches. I'm also, I'm gonna play the audio because I want you to listen to what it's like at a Japanese high school baseball game. I don't know what it's like at any of their um, uh, softball games, but this is what it's like at a baseball game.
the same thing. Wow. Okay. Why First of all, you get food I don't know. Here's the, here's what we're talking about tonight. Okay, is your hitting routine? What you do between pitches? Okay. How many words did I ask you to remember for today? Four. Four. Actually, any of the ones I've given you so far aren't any of the four. All right. So here you go. I'm going to flip over to the back of your paper. Okay. We're going to give you the three parts to your routine. All right. Now, I have this countdown that goes from 15 to 10. 15 is a magic number. The first concept I want you to remember tonight is 15 seconds. That's how much time you need to fill between pitches. I'm going to look at the baseball guys and say this. At the, at the major league level, there's about 20, and as they talk about instituting a pitch clock, there's about 20 to 23 seconds between pitches. And that's from when the catcher catches it to when he would catch it again. You need a routine that lasts, that will cover about 15 seconds because here we take the pitch, it hits, that's a couple seconds, I'm gonna take the signs, we need 15 seconds. Ladies, it's gonna end up being about the same. Okay, so the first concept I want you to understand is there's 15 seconds between pitches that we gotta work on. How many seconds? 15 seconds. Okay, that's what we gotta know, 15 seconds between pitches. How many seconds between pitches? 15. Okay, research says that you gotta kinda repeat things uh, 50 times so that we get it set in. So here's the deal. You can own the 15 seconds between pitches or the 15 seconds be between pitches can own you. So if you had to hit while that music was playing the whole time, would you get a little like out of what you needed to do? Maybe. He's probably used to it. But hey, what if a coach is, now you've got coaches that are going to be giving you some information, you got parents that might be saying something to you, you got your teammates that are going to be cheering you on, and you've got to be able to be able to own that 15 seconds and be able to have a routine that, that you can work with. So our goal is that you own your 15 seconds. Now it starts in the on-deck serve. You don't have to write any of this down yet. Okay? I want to show you, this is a fan, and this is for the uh, softball players. Uh, the best video I have is from a softball um, team. All right, but if you look right here, you've got the hitter that's ready to hit, and you've got the on-deck batter doing working on their timing and their rhythm. They are working together. This is just as if they're hitting, so that when they get into the batter's box, there's no surprise on the timing with the pitcher. There's no surprise on when the pitcher goes into their windup, whether they're stepping back, whether the pitcher is, whether it's the, the baseball pitcher that's going to step back to start, or whether it's a softball pitcher that's, that's just getting ready when they take their signs. Either one, okay? There's no surprise now, and then this is able to happen. And I want you to watch this over and over again. So this girl, actually, this, this Alabama player actually is hitting a home run. But if you watch the girl in the on-deck circle, is their front foot's hit at the exact same time. So your routine begins in the on-deck circle. Where's your routine beginning? On-deck circle. All right? This is just as if you're hitting. When you're, what's before being on deck? Say it again. You're in the hole, okay? That's when you're kind of preparing. That's when you're going to be getting your helmet on. That's when you're going to be getting your batting gloves on, whatever it is you're right. This is just as if you're hitting. So you're working on your same three parts of your routine that we're going to go over. I love to watch this over and over, especially for you girls, because they're now getting into the super regionals of softball. There's going to be softball on ESPN all the time. And by the way, Alabama's pretty good. Okay, they're pretty good. And this is one of the reasons they're good, is because they have all of these things working together. Obviously, they have some very talented players. But you get the idea. You have the opportunity to do this. Okay, it just so happens that these two are right-handed batters. we got this example here. This one's right-handed. That one's left-handed. But they're still going to end up working on the same thing. I could watch that all day, but we would sit here and we wouldn't get anything else accomplished. Okay, our job is to be able to own our 15 seconds. So when we start inside ourselves to being able to perform outside, we start inside to be able to perform outside. There's going to be three parts to the routine. And so you'll see you're going to have three boxes. What's 15? This is a little stretch for you, but I know you can do it. What's 15 divided by 3? 5. 
So each of these pieces will last about five seconds. Now the first two kind of get put together. The first one is this. You're going to have a focal point. Okay? A focal point, a focus point. So get that written in the first box. You don't have to write it exactly where I have it. But in that first box, you want to have a focal point somewhere. Whose bag is this? Care if I use your bag? I won't sway it, I won't hit anything. This one. Okay, thank you. So, somewhere on this bag, and I, you bring your bag to hit every single time, right? I hope so, because if you didn't, you would like, <laughs> get a hit. Yep. Um, I, I actually think in the rule book it doesn't say you have to have a bag. It doesn't say you have to come up with a bag. It does give some guidelines on what the bag can or can't be, but it doesn't say you have to have a bat when you go up to hit. That would be weird if you didn't. Anyway, all right, so you're going to take the bat with you every single time. Somewhere on here is going to be a spot that you're going to use as a focal point. So we give the bat as an option, the home plates at every field. I work with the York College softball team. I've worked with them for the last six years as well. And one of the things that a lot of the ladies on that team like to do is they use a home plate as their focal point. As they're taking their deep breath, they look at the, the home plate and they're able to kind of uh, lock everything in, lock everything else out, and be ready to go. But somewhere on this bat, and I give these examples. So let's say some, some people swing in east and they might look at the E for energy. They, you might look at the X as like where you're, you're trying to, X marks the spot. Something that represents and means something to you. That's your focal point. Okay? So before you step in the batter's box, after you've taken your signs, you're going to be taking a deep breath and looking at the focal point. Which then, what do you think block number two is? I just gave you a little bit of an idea these guys are doing it. Yeah, okay. I'm going to focus on making sure we take a breath. Okay, now it might be, it might be uh, interesting for me to say that because are all of you breathing right now? Yeah. Yes, or you wouldn't be alive, right? But we want to make sure we take a focused breath. I love this picture here because what's he doing while he's taking his breath? He's looking at his back. I don't know what, um, this is our Nando, I don't know what his focal point is. I don't know what he's looking at. I could say it might be the trademark because we don't see the trademark in the picture. But he's got something that he looks at to be able to focus himself on that back. Now, if you notice, I, this box is about to 1 to 5, and this is about 6 to 10, but you're going to be doing those together. Okay, this is a routine, so what's the first part of your routine? Focal point. What's the second part? Breathe. Breathe. So you've got three out of the four things you need to remember. We've got to get them to adjust the timer. You've got three out of the four things you need to remember. How many seconds between pitches? Oh, come on, this isn't school where you have to raise your hand. Let's go. How many seconds between pitches? 15, okay? First part is focal point. point. Second thing we got to do, breathe. That's three out of the four things. Now, here's the deal. Can we see if you're looking at your focal point? Yeah. Yeah, we can see him do this. You can see me do this. Your coaches can see that. Is it a real mental skill? I think so. Okay, but it's something we can see. Can we see you take a breath? Yes. yes. And I'm going to say that for sure, yes, because here's the deal. You're all sitting here breathing. Yeah. We can't see it. We can see you take a deep, focused breath. Okay? So here's the first activity we're going to do. I want you to stand up for a second. I want you to put your pens, everything down. Yeah. Okay? okay? Here's what I want you to do. I don't care if it's your right or left hand, it doesn't matter. I want you to put one hand on your chest, the other hand on your belly. Okay? One hand on chest, one hand on belly. Okay? I want you to be able to take a deep breath, and I don't care if you move your chest or your belly, but you don't have to move your shoulders. And what I mean by that is I don't want this. Okay? Can you do it? Okay. Now close your eyes, do it again. Okay, now. 
Imagine that you're holding your bag. Okay, just put your bag out in front of you. Okay. I know many of you have a bag here tonight, but just for right now, imagine that you're holding your bag. Okay. I want you to be able to look at your bag. Yeah. And take a deep breath, and you can move your chest or your your belly, but not your shoulders. Can you feel yourself doing that? Yeah. Here's what we're going to do next week when we go. When we work on our routines next week, you're actually going to do that before you go and hit. Now, let's try something second. I want you to take your shoulders up. Just take your shoulders down. What happens in your neck when you do that? Uh, it feels weird. Yeah, it does feel weird. Let me ask this. Is your neck, are your neck or your shoulders, are they tense or relaxed? Tense. They're tense. Okay? This is why we don't want you to bring your shoulders up. We just want you to take a good deep breath. We call it a belly breath. It doesn't mean you have to move your belly, but it means we breathe from in here. How many of you ever gotten the wind knocked out of you? Me. Okay? You get hit right here. You want this to move. Okay? Alright, we want this to move. How many seconds between pitches? Fifteen. Fifteen. What's your first part of your routine? The second part. Here's the third point. We can't see it. You can write this down. Our positive words. I didn't, I didn't write positive in there because it was too long. I just put a plus sign. Positive words. Now the chances are we won't be able to see you say these words. Some of you, maybe you'll decide to move your lips while you say it. But at worst, at least we need to say it within our head. Now, here's, here's what I give kids to start. So at your age, this is what I start with. And it might adapt as you get a little older. Three words. In order to hit the ball, what do you got to do? See the ball. There you go, you just come up with See the ball. Okay, so at your age, that's what you can start with. So as I'm doing this, as I have my focal point, my deep breath, see the ball. And I step into the batter's box and I'm ready to go. Okay? So I would like you to write that down. See the ball. If you really want to um, abbreviate, you can just use the letter C. Because I'm not checking your spell. See the ball. with your positive words. See the ball. Now, as you get older, you might adapt that based on the situation. Maybe if you have to bunt, you might get it down. It might be the words that you use. It might be different things that, that you build into it as you go. Now, I'm going to do this. This is pretty good timing. Uh, I'm going to take about like two minutes, and I'm going to just talk about the defensive routine. But hey, one of the three parts. Was that on like a four minute timer? There's three parts, right? Focal point, breathe, and words. It's the same thing when you're on defense. Your focal point might be your glove for the pitchers in the circle or the mound. Okay? It might be the pitching rubber where you take a deep breath. Look at the catcher and you're ready to go. Okay, so it's still, what's that? Okay. So you still have a focal point, you still take a deep breath, and you still have the words you say to yourself. You're ready to go. We're going to do a little activity next week for hitting, we'll do a little activity on the field to kind of push into some of those. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Um, you can do, I have enough resources to do this individually. Or you could do it with a partnership. It actually would probably be more difficult if you do it in a partnership. Uh, but this is one of my favorite activities. Let's meet over at this table. You want to do this on a piece of paper? Okay. You're going to get five nuts and you're going to get a stick.
All right. How many seconds between the pitches? 15. Okay. So what we're going to do is you have five pitches here. And your job is to stack these five pitches. these tables you want to have a piece of paper because you're kind of doing it here on the slide around. Alright. Get a shish kebab. You can go to your own table and do it, but the more people that are at a table, the more likely somebody it is the more likely it is that somebody hits your uh, the leg of your table <laughs> and shakes it. Take it down.
believe in you. Uh, now, now do it with a little bit of time. Meaning, put a stopwatch on it and see how fast you can do it. Because the game, because as you get older, the game's going to speed up. You're going to play on the same diamond. You're going to play, for, especially in the softball, you're going to play mostly on the same size diamond. The game's just going to get faster and faster and faster. Baseball guys, I understand the diamond gets a little bigger, but the bottom line is the game, as you get to that point, just gets faster and faster and faster. Even if you don't get it, just the fact that you keep going at it is building your mindset for valuable performance. stay here for another like 30 minutes and work on these but we do have another group coming in. How many seconds between pitches? 15. 15. What's the first part of the routine? Focal point. While you're looking at the focal point, what are you taking? Deep breaths. Deep breath. We call it a what kind of breath? Look at me. We call it a what kind of breath? A belly breath. Okay? What's the last piece? We can't see it. We can't see it. What's the last part? Positive words. Okay? You can put the shish kebabs back in here. We will meet uh, back at the uh, cages and the diamonds and implement these next week. <laughs> 